If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, One Star Week Foot, and we're back for another team of the season player review. And today, we're going to review this team of the season, Musa Suzoko. And like I was saying in last week's video, I was looking forward to trying this card out. Um, he's had a really good year for Spurs, really, really turned his career around, and I definitely wanted to try him in FIFA. His car looks really nice. He's 6'2". He has medium-medium work rates. He's right-footed. He does have a 2-star weak foot and 3-star skill moves. I played 6 games in Division 1 with him. I got 0 goals, but I did get 3 assists. Before I go any further, if you're new around here and you're enjoying the content, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down below. And if you're enjoying the content and you're already subscribed, do me a favor and hit the like button down below. I appreciate all you guys for watching. Now let's look at the stats. So, he has 84 pace. His acceleration is a little bit on the low side, but he does have a lot of sprint speed. His shooting is all right. I mean, nothing crazy. He does have really high shot power. His passing looks pretty average. His dribbling also looks pretty average. His, his, his agility, his balance is pretty low. His composure is pretty average. Um, overall, this card actually... When you look at the face stats, it looks better than it does when you look at the in-game stats. I mean, look at his defending. His defending stats are all amazing until you get to the marking, which is only 52. 52 marking on Suzuko. That's a travesty. Um, his physical stats are the only stats that are really elite. He has 93 stamina, 95 strength, 85 aggression, and 85 jumping at 6'2". So physically, he's going to be amazing. Um, we're going to see... How does he play in game? What's his best position? Let's answer your questions right now. So, according to Footman, this card's gonna cost you 104,000 if you wanna buy him off the market. And if you wanna do the SBC, which I don't know why you'd wanna do this SBC, but if you wanna do this SBC, it'll cost you 120,000 untradeable. Is he worth that money? Well, I would say 100K is definitely a fair price for him. Um, I do think he's going to drop because more Team of the Seasons will come out that will be better than him. But as for right now, 100K is definitely a fair price. Um, let me break down the stats. So he has 84 pace. I played him in the CDM position because I feel like he's not quite well-rounded enough to play at CM or CAM or any other midfield position. And as a CDM, his pace was definitely decent. Um, his acceleration being only 79 did not let me down. I didn't really notice him being too sluggish. He did have enough pace to track back when I was getting countered. However, I wouldn't say he's somebody that I would call fast. I would say his pace is an 8 out of 10. His shooting, I only got to take a few shots with the card. I mean, he is a CDM in my team. Um, one thing I did notice with the shots, though, was that they were extremely powerful. However, inside and outside the box, I did notice that the accuracy at times was lacking. So as far as accuracy, as far as finishing, he's probably, he's pretty average. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about his shooting. His passing. I would say his passing was very hit or miss, and it does make sense because he has average passing stats, right? He has 85 short passing, which is good, 82 long passing, which is not bad, but then he only has 75 vision, and then he also has a two-star weak foot. So that probably explains a lot of the inconsistent passing I was noticing with the card. At times, he would make passes that would surprise me as to how good it was, and then other times, he would make passes where I was wondering where he was passing because it was nowhere near the target. So overall, I would say his passing was pretty disappointing. It was 7 out of 10 overall. His dribbling. I would say his dribbling is another thing that definitely let me down. I mean, he has 72 agility. He's six foot two, So of course, you know he's not going to be too smooth in the game. I did notice he was pretty clunky when I was trying to turn with him. Um, his reactions are fairly low at 80. His ball control is 83. His dribbling is 82. And in game, you did feel that. Because when I am trying to dribble with him, even though I'm not even trying to turn, if I'm just trying to do simple dribbling moves, it takes him a while to pull them off. And I would get dispossessed at times because he's just a little sluggish. Um, as far as turning, as far as responsiveness for, for, for trying to dribble, I, I thought his dribbling was very, very mediocre overall. And I wasn't really a fan of it. Overall, I would say his dribbling is a 6 out of 10. His defending. There were things I loved about his defending, and there were things that were not so good about his defending. So, 
As far as what I really liked about his defending, his interceptions were definitely noticeable. He, his interceptions were really nice as far as breaking up play. Uh, he, has a, he has a very long legs. He has long reach for his interceptions. So he was getting in a lot of interceptions when he was in position. And I stress when he was in position because his marking stat definitely came into play. Because he has medium, medium work rate. So... As far as being in position, he's already at a disadvantage because of the medium defensive work rates. On top of that, he has 52 marking. So I found in my midfield that I had to drag him back manually to get to the right position so much of the time. Because he would just be floating in midfield, not really paying attention to the play or not really doing much as far as like marking anybody. His, his marking is definitely something that lets him down, especially when you consider he only has medium defensive work rates. However, his stand tackling was amazing. His stand tackling, if he's near a player, if he's near a player, he's able to muscle them off the ball. He's able to get in a strong tackle, and he wins most 50-50 balls because he's big, he's physical, and he has a good stand tackling stat. So, if you're the kind of player who's always going to be um, controlling your CDM, you're always dragging back, them back into the position, and when you defend, you mostly control your CDMs, you're probably going to like him defensively because you're already you know, dragging your CDM everywhere. This is the kind of card that's going to work for you. However, if you don't always control your CDM, if you let the AI do some of the CDM defending, you're going to be disappointed because you're going to find him out of position so much of the time, it's probably going to frustrate you like it did frustrate me. However, when he's in position... His defense is actually really good. His stand tackling is insane. His interceptions are really nice. Anytime he's near the ball, he's bound to come away with it. The problem is, he's not near the ball as much of the time as you would like. Overall, I would say his defending is an 8 out of 10. His physical. His physical is definitely elite. This is the one thing about the card that I can say is really amazing. All right, his strength is 95. It definitely feels like that in game. He does not get bullied by anybody. His stamina is 93. He does not need a sub. His jumping is 85. He wins most headers in the air no matter who he's up against. And his aggression to 85 is also something nice to add to this little equation. Overall, I would say his physical is a 9.5 out of 10. Um, you can't complain at all about his physical. So what would I rate this card overall? I would say he's definitely a 7.5 out of 10. There's certain things that he does really well, and there's certain things that he doesn't do uh, well at all, to, for lack of a better term. So if you're the kind of person who likes to drag your CDMs throughout the midfield and make quick passes once you get the ball, don't try to drive forward too much, don't try to dribble too much with your CDM, then you're actually probably going to like this card because when he's in position, like I said, he puts in really good tackles, he gets really good interceptions in, and if you're the kind of person who likes to drag his CDM everywhere, then he's going to be your guy. However, if you want more out of your CDM, if you want him to be able to pass, dribble, um, even shoot when in position, or even like just be in position when you're not controlling him, then you're not going to enjoy this card. Um, overall, I did, like I said, he was a fun card to try, but... I wouldn't really use him in Weekend League for those reasons um, because you want to use him as CDM because of his physical and defense, but you're not going to be able to because he's just not good enough in terms of his marking and in terms of his other qualities to really justify bringing on to your team when there's other options you can get when Team of the Season really starts kicking off. So yeah, that's going to be my Moose and Suzuko Team of the Season review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Once again, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button down below. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. But until then, later.